For those of you wondering, yes, this map is compatible with the public branch of Railroads Online. Now then, I've had a few map ideas bouncing around in the back of my head for a while now. Two have seriously stuck with me. One, having a mountainous map focused on weird track building along cliff sides, and two, a map with multiples of most industries for players to connect. For the longest time, these two ideas were stuck in a never-ending mental jousting match, fighting for the right to become my next map, until recently, I had a small epiphany. Why not combine the two? It's a surprisingly decent pairing. The excessive amount of industries, alongside their wildly differing placements, gives each playstyle a chance to shine. For example, Smelter Number 2 is right next to the ironworks, giving you some nice room for shunting. Coal Mines 4 and 5, along with Iron Mine Number 2, are close enough to link up, but have such massive height differences that switchbacks are probably necessary if you want to do that directly. There's a long run from the ironworks to the oil field that goes across the entire map if you'd rather just pull out a Tweetsie and still take 20 minutes to reach your destination because it's that far away. And, of course, the multiple industries make it perfect for a larger multiplayer experience. Speaking of which, a small tangent and shameless plug, uh, if you want to play this map with others in a massive playthrough, we'll be hosting one of the coming weeks on our community Discord. There'll even be a session tonight. Check that out if you're interested, or just maybe too lazy to build the tracks yourself. Now, the real gimmick of the map, though, has to be the mountainous segments. In total, 8 of 19 industries are on weird ledges that are hard to build on. Admittedly, one of them is in one of the two starting pre-built areas for this map. Yes, there are two starting areas, I'll explain that in a little bit. But still, nearly half the map is on weird ledges that are hard to reach and hard to build on. Though, honestly, it doesn't matter too much, since of those eight industries, five of them are coal mines. In total, there are six coal mines on this map, hence the name Coal Country. The ledges on the mountains are kind of hard to fit anything other than iron and coal mines on, so I decided to go all in and just spam coal mines everywhere, and this provides you with an interesting, unique challenge. I'd like to see you guys try to run 10 full hoppers from every mine and deliver them all to the freight depot. They don't all need to be in one train, just over time, but 10 from each by the end of your playthrough. You don't have to do that challenge if you don't want to. Most of the locations are honestly a real pain to reach, and I doubt everyone will have the energy to connect them all. But, well, that's exactly why mixing the mountainous idea with the multi-industry one is such a good plan. You don't have to go for that stupid hard challenge, and you can still enjoy the map. I think that's most of what I have to say about the map's actual design right now. Maybe I'm lazy, maybe I'm uninspired, honestly, who knows, who cares? I don't, so let's just move on to what you start with when you first open the map. Interestingly, there are actually two different starting areas, the McCleary Timber Company and the Everett Stevenson Logging Company. Both connect a logging camp to a sawmill, but that's where the similarities end. The easier one to operate has to be the McCleary Timber Company. It has itself a cute little Montezuma, two flat cars, and a way car. The line follows the riverside as it delivers logs and has a maximum grade of 1% and very nice gradual mainline curves. But do be warned, the logging camp has one super sharp 30 meter radius that you cannot avoid on its entry. You better be careful when you're coming into town. The Everett Stevenson Logging Company, on the other hand, has a wildly different setup. The log camp they've linked up to is pretty high up compared to the sawmill it supplies, and to make it up and down the hill, some extra planning and power was required. That's where their Shea comes into play, along with a wild set of switchbacks. Between the two of them, the McCleary is the faster and easier one to do, but the Everett Stevenson Company gives you far more logs per trip thanks to their larger fleet of skeleton cars. 
It is slower and harder to run, but you'll be making more money per trip. If you're finding that one of them just doesn't tickle your fancy, you can always go to the other one immediately. After all, they're both included with the base map. And that's it. If you want another additional challenge to play with, there's a Betsy hidden somewhere on the map. You do not need to clip out of bounds to find her, and she is the original, though given a headlight just because the headlight looks cool, you know? If you want a variant without the tracks, I'm sorry, but I haven't made one. The Everett Stevenson Logging Company supplies a logging camp that, without tracks, would look like it's floating in the air, and the McCleary Timber Company is so simple and short that I figured people wouldn't be too annoyed with it being pre-built. If you'd like a variant with all of the tracks, well, let me re-extend that offer from earlier. Building tracks isn't a walk in the park, especially on a map this complicated, so I haven't really gone ahead and done that yet, but you can join us on the Discord community save and help the team complete the save, even if all you do is run trains around the pre-existing tracks. Come join us and have a little fun. I'll be streaming tomorrow, joined by channel members and Ko-Fi subscribers to run the trains, so if you're interested in watching a playthrough that's already slightly started on this map, tune in tomorrow. We usually start at noon, West Coast, United States. And, above all else, have a good day. Cheers, folks.